Well, in today's project, I'm going to make a needle case, and I'm going to make it out of part of this particular cast resin block that I did a few days ago. And a needle case is, I guess, for a sewer, but you can put anything you want in it. You can put pills or toothpicks or whatever. Here's another piece uh, that I did recently that's going to be pen blanks. So I invite you to watch this video on making a needle case. Well, greetings once again. Welcome to my shop, 2018. Although I'm starting this video the last few days of December 2017. My project for today is going to be a needle case. Now I'll draw your attention to this article by Stuart Thomas. December of 2017 is the issue. And I'll give you a close-up of the needle cases. Now, a word about plagiarizing. Now I'm going to loosely copy the style and the shape of these needle cases. I'll, I'll do one, and I'm not sure if I'm going to copy exactly any particular one he's got in his article. I just love the shape of these. They're so cool. And I don't intend to mass produce these and sell them. This will be probably the only one I make. Now, if you copy somebody's design, it's very original, and you um, present that as your own and sell it, that's a problem to me. And I think as wood turners, we have to be aware of that. So let's get on with the project. I, sh I showed you a couple examples of some of my cast pieces that I did recently. And I'm going to take the end off this particular piece and I'm going to make a needle case. Okay, I cut my blank off this uh, main casting right here. This is a hybrid. I've got a little burl in there with the uh, resin. And from this remaining piece, I'm sure I can get uh, eight, probably eight pen blanks out of that. There's a little bit of the burl right there. Now, this piece is inch and a half by inch and a half by, oh, maybe five inches. I'm gonna true up this half right here and I'm gonna reverse it into my long nose jaws. And yes, I'm gonna get a face shield if I can find one. I'm putting a little bit of water on here so maybe we can see exactly what the inside of this cast piece is going to look like. My intention is to put a threaded connection right here. This will be the very top. This will be, oh, probably the dimension of the lid. And then the rest of that will be the body of my needle case. Now what I'm concerned about is running into this burl right here and trying to put threads in that. I think I'll be okay. So I'm gonna put a little bit of a tenon right here and I'm gonna reverse this and part this off. I'll part the main part off and it will work on the cap or the lid. Now in the next clip, I'm gonna take a small skew chisel and work on my tenon. And you can cut this cast resin, but you have to be really careful. I have never had one explode on me or anything terrible happen, but you can get a little bit of chip out that you have to fix. But you just have to kind of uh, be more in a scraping orientation. I certainly don't have the bevel rubbing here, but it's, uh, it's really more cutting as I do this tenon. And the frustrating part is you can't see much. Now right now I'm taking a small skew chisel and leveling off this surface and I've got my blank reversed and I'm taking down the remainder of it with the spindle roughing gouge and I'm probably turning around a thousand rpm. Now I've rounded the rest of my blank off 
and I put a tenon on the long section. That's going to be the base of my of my project, my needle case. And I think I've decided I'm going to take this over on my bandsaw and just cut that off. All right, now cutting this on the bandsaw removed a little bit less wood than if I had parted it off. So there's my my base. There's my my lid. Or I'm not sure what Stuart Thomas called that, but we'll have to find that out. Now I have a little bit of an idea of the shape I want eventually. If you look at the inside of this, I need to put female threads here and male threads here to connect this. And I think I'll be okay. I may run into a little bit of that burl, but I can probably fortify that with a little CA glue and I can thread that. The other thing I'm going to do is I get into the threading is I'm probably going to use a 20 TPI chaser. I ordinarily use a 16. I thought this is acrylic. Uh, it's resin and it should take a pretty good thread. So let me chuck this up and we'll move on. Now I have my lid uh, chucked up into my jaws here and I'm going to clean this up just a little bit. I've got a flat spot there so I've got a very small skew chisel. I'm going to put a little bead right here and I'm going to have part of the profile or the shape in the lid and part of it in the base and that'll uh, be disguised as you put that together. And when I was using this tool I was really using it in a cutting orientation. You really have to be careful with, with the resin. But it cuts pretty well if you're just careful. Now, I'm going to take advantage of this resin. I think it's going to cut very nicely if I use this beading tool. So I'm going to put a bead here, and there'll also be one uh, on the very top of the base. I'm still a little big right here, so I'm going to take some of that down. Now what I'm using is a D-Way um, beading tool. I put a new sharpen on the edge. I'm going to do just a little bit more with this. Now I just have to clean up this area right here and get ready for a little bit of thread chasing. Now if you are not a thread chaser, you can certainly do this project with just a suction fit or a slip fit, whatever you choose. I'm drilling out the very center of this and I'm establishing my depth on the cap. And if you do this, it's important, in my opinion, if you slow the lathe down quite a bit, I'm probably only turning four or 500 RPM. Now this gives your next tool a little bit of uh, space to begin the cut. And I'm using my inside tool or what Alan Batty might call a square tool just to remove some of the uh, bulk from the inside of that recess. And I'm sorry about the hand. Now here I'm using a box scraper and this particular tool has a negative rake on it. It's a little bit safer using this tool when you're trying to cut into this resin, but it does fairly well. And I'm back to my inside tool and I'm establishing a very nice parallel side on that so I can go into my thread chasing.
Okay, I've got the cap hollowed out and I'm ready to chase some threads. So what I need to do is I'm going to take my inside tool here and really level off this surface right here and make that as parallel to my bedways as I can. Don't be tempted to put your finger in there when that lathe is spinning around. So now I'm going to take my point tool, clean up the uh, surface right here, and make a little bit of a chamfer so I can begin my thread easily. Now using my point tool supported by my armrest tool gives me a better approach for uh, turning and making this particular operation. It just gives me a lot of flexibility and I never have to move the tool rest when I'm using my armrest tool. Okay, now as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to use a 20 TPI thread chaser. And this stuff cuts beautifully. I've got a little bit of that burl wood right here, but I'm not really seeing it on the inside of my uh, surface where my female thread's going to be. So I'm going to get everything adjusted properly. I'm a little bit high on my tool rest. I think my thread chaser is sharpened adequately. Now I'm not going to focus too much on chasing threads. I've got a bunch of videos on that topic that you're sure welcome to look at. So here we go. I'm going to start in the second or third tooth back and go as far back as I can. Now the nice thing about this setup is I really don't have a shoulder back here. I can chase this thread and I've got a lot of room for my thread chaser. So let's get this set up to go to chasing speed, which I'm going to set at 316, 316 RPM. So here we go. Now at this point I've got a really, really nice thread established. I'm right to the point where my thread chaser is going to be 90 degrees to the threads. And I'm almost there. They're, they're very nice. I don't know if you can see those. And what I'm doing with my armrest tool, once I get the thread chaser right here, I simply pull back on my armrest tool. I'm getting some some really really nice shavings off that and I'm happy with that I'm going to stop my threads are good and we will go to the next operation now I'm going to do a little bit of sanding on the lower part of this bead right here because I may not be able to get to it later on so I've got some sandpaper some wet wet dry sandpaper and I'll probably just run through all the way to 12,000 grit on this very quickly. It won't take very long. On the inside it didn't really matter all that much. I think I sanded to 1,000 grit or maybe 1,200. But that's not going to matter quite as much as this outside will. I will certainly speed this up. I think I'm at 6,000 grit. And 12,000 grit. Okay, now I'm going to take another beading tool, a D-Way beading tool, and I've got this detail right here in the cap. 
and it's my largest beading tool. So I'm going to go down to the next size, down from that larger one, and I'm going to put a bead right here. Well, time out indeed. Did you catch it? I forgot to do my male thread. Now I've got the female recess marked on my digital calipers and it's right at seven eighths of an inch right here. Now I'm going to mark this. Okay, I did a little work off camera getting ready for my male thread. I've got that in the ballpark. Now I need to do a couple things here. I need to establish a recess right here, sometimes called the stop gap. And I need to develop more of a chamfer right here where my threads will begin. So I'm going up to turning speed with my point tool. Making a little chamfer right here. And then right back here I'm going to do that uh, recess. So I'm ready to chase my male thread, get my tool rest height in position. I want about a finger uh, thickness right in here between my tool rest and my uh, threads. I'll start at about 45 degrees. And turning speed will be 270. 285. Okay, I like that. It's not real fast because I have this uh, shoulder right here to contend with. So I just begin by taking a light pass. And I want to establish uh, a little bit of a thread right here. So my chaser will follow that. And I'm right there. Now I've got a fairly good thread going. I'm going to just uh, keep turning the corner where my thread chaser is pretty much perpendicular. Now I'm going to just check and see if I'm even close. I'm, I'm really large on this diameter, so I'm going to take some of that off there. Well, I did some uh, thread chasing off camera, and I think I'm really close. So, I've contacted my Thread. It's in the groove, it's mating up, and sometimes you luck out. I'm just really, really close to being lined up here. I think what I'm going to do is do a little bit of uh, turning on the cap of this, and by the time I get done with that, that'll probably tighten up to where it'll line up. Now at this point, another technique I employ is slowing down my speed on my lathe. And that's really a good idea, but the grooves are already established and you can slow it down and it's easier to go into that shoulder with your chaser. Okay, I had to do a little fine tuning. I had a, a flat area back here I had to keep chasing. It was holding my cap out a little bit. I need to go from here to here. And how I will do that is I'll take a little bit off this shoulder right here. I don't want to take off too much. Now trying to get this burl wood to line up uh, did take quite a bit of time and messing around so I'm going to cut a lot of that out but you can kind of see me pointing to the area that needs to line up here. And I think the next project I'm going to leave the wood out of it because I'm not sure if it adds a whole lot to it. And just for fun, I thought I would show you the finished lid. Pretty cool. It is pretty neat and uh, shined up very nicely. Okay, let me catch you up on where I'm at right now with my project. 
I pretty well line my burl section up right here. I've got just a little bit farther to go. I need to do some projects where I'm just using a cast resin. That stuff takes a thread really, really awesome. So let me show you what I'm going to do next. I've taken a small parting tool right here. My little Robert Sorby micro parting tool. And I've taken this area down a little bit smaller than that diameter. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, the next size down of my D-Way beading tool and I'm going to put a bead right here. Now this parting tool really is designed to cut right at center height and it does an excellent job. The area I'm cutting right now is about 80% resin and that cuts so cleanly it's really really cool just too bad you can't see what I'm doing because of the uh, debris coming off there. The strings of resin. A little more fine tuning and I'm just trying to uh, have that tool contact the entire surface I'm working on. Now I've got a little piece right here that I need to reduce the diameter a little bit so I'm going to take my point tool and do that. Okay, there we go. That uh, little detail right here needs a little bit more work. Right now, I'm going to work a little bit more on the body of my needle case. Take some of that away. Now, mostly what I'm doing right now is just removing some of the bulk from the base of my project. And the tool I'm using is a Robert Sorby gouge. It looks like a little tiny bowl gouge, but it really, really does a nice job. And later on, I will do more profiling when I get this between centers. All right, now the other thing I have to be aware of is my opening right here. It's a little bit less than a half an inch, so I don't want to get too small right here, or I will have a little tiny napkin ring. Yeah, I'm getting a little closer on my alignment right here. And the more I take off down here, the more of that burl wood is seen, which is pretty cool. Almost looks like a little man with a hat right there. Anyway, um, I think the next step is to profile the very top of my cap and the rest of the body. And I'm not quite sure how to do that. I may go between centers more. All right, now I was a little bit nervous using a screw chuck to turn my lid my cap. So what I've done here is I've uh, made a little jam chuck and at the very end after I get done profiling the top of this I can take my tailstock away and just sand the rest of that. Now I started out using my little point tool and um, it worked really well so I just continued with that. Now the point tool really is a scraper which is pretty safe. As long as I don't get that point in there, I'm okay. Okay, I think I have that shape about where I want it. I've got a little nub on the very end of that to take off. I do a little sanding on that and then I'll work on the base.
I've got the base of my needle case jam chucked between centers and I'm going to work on this bottom profile here and right here on that pencil line is the bottom of the inside of my needle case. So I'm going to do a little bit of work on this. Now as I near the end of my project, I'm analyzing what I've done so far. Um, the shape isn't right where I need it to be. I want to take this down quite a bit more. It's really fat. Um, I've got a lot of thickness here, so I'm not worried about going through the side of the wall. It's about a half an inch thick through there. So that's the next thing I'm going to do. I'm going to make sure this is nice and tight. I'm going to reestablish my bottom dimension right there. So let me turn that on. Let me continue profiling this a little bit more. I've made two marks on the base of my needle case right here. Is going to be the narrowest part of this area. Right here, I'm going to have that as the high point, or the largest diameter. I'm getting in the ballpark, and what I've done here is I've switched to a spindle gouge with some swept back wings, and I'm going to just scrape that until I get to the surface that I want. Now from here on out, it's a simple task of removing a little bit of uh, material by scraping, and I think this is a pretty good approach. Doing a push cut takes a little too much wood off, so I like to just uh, take my time and uh, take off little bits of wood with that scraping cut, and I think it's somewhere between a cut and a scrape. So I'm going to speed up quite a few of these clips for the remainder of this video, and uh, we'll get the needle case made very quickly. Now much of what I did on the lid is a repetition for what I'm doing right now. I'm doing a little work with my point tool on the very bottom of the base and I can reach all of that except for just a little area that I'll sand off the lathe. A little more work right there. I will be done with this very quickly and the sanding is pretty much the same. I'm going to go through the grits because I've got that resin to deal with and it's got to be shiny. All right, now my rule, at least for me, is whenever I'm turning, I try to use the smallest tool I can. And nothing works better than just doing a little bit of uh, fine tuning on the bottom of my base here with my point tool. It works really well. Now another tool I'm gonna go to is this negative rake scraper. And this is a tool I transformed from just a square end scraper with a, a flat top to this negative rake scraper. So I'm going to just go around as much of this larger diameter as I can uh, reach with this tool. Now with a little bit of a burr on this tool on the top right here, I'm getting a really, really good surface. You can see the difference from that to that surface there. Very nicely polished. So I'm going to continue and do a little bit more work. And I can actually get into this area right here with this uh, curved area of my negative rake scraper. Well, I'm going to do a little bit of work off camera. I'm going to sand this piece and put a finish on it and show you the finished needle case. And, well, I appreciate you watching, and I will talk to you next time. Thanks.